Dr. Ara Duke Majin with Prime Coral, and I'm going to show you the RTN Parasite. I've been talking about it now for one month, and I discovered it about four months ago when I had a coral RTN. I found it crawling along the surface. There were hundreds of them. I found that different corals are infected with different numbers of these parasites. Some corals have more, others corals have less. But Acropora tend to have quite a bit. This is a small acro colony that RTN'd, and when it did, I took it out of the system and I put it in about, say, 25 milliliters of water. Now, just a few minutes ago, I took a drop of that, uh, sorry, 10 drops of that water, and I put those 10 drops, which is equivalent to about a milliliter of water, I put it in a petri dish and now we're looking at it under the microscope. And what you're seeing are quite literally thousands and thousands of the parasites. And this is in 10 drops of tank water. This is from one Acropora small colony, the size of your thumb. And yet there are thousands of the parasites. Here's one that's dividing and splitting into two. You can see them swimming around. Okay, this is not computer generated. This is real life, real microscopic view, 40X, which means 40 times magnification. These parasites swim from coral to coral in your system. They infect certain corals more than others. People ask me, well, why don't they kill all my coral? Because when somebody's sick in class, coughing and sneezing, does everyone get sick? Absolutely not. Diseases don't infect every single organism that's around them. They have a predilection for specific types, specific immunities. So if there's one coral that's sicker than another, maybe they go to that one. If there's one coral that has a better inflammatory system, maybe they don't go to that one. If there's one coral with a better immune system, they may not go to that one. If there's one coral where the flow is strong and they can't even latch on, they won't go to that one. So they typically, have a predilection for chalices and acroporas, SPS like monoporas, but they can infect and kill any coral. So don't be fooled. Any coral, if you put that coral in the water with these creatures, they will infect it, they will kill it. It's just a matter of time. It could be 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, it could be a week, but they will infect it and kill it, okay? Now, they don't infect and kill every single coral, why are they able to do some and not others? We don't know yet. These are unanswered questions, but they're very good questions. They're just not answered. So what I know about them is that all RTN and STN in corals, I mean all RTN and STN, is due to these parasites, with the exception of people boiling their corals and, ex and, and basically exposing their coral to extreme events of temperature or chemistry, which cause death of the tissue, these parasites are the cause. So when people ask me if I raise my alkalinity to 50 and it, the coral dies and RTNs, is it due to the parasites? No, it's due to your stupidity, all right? If, I, if my temperature drops two degrees or rises two degrees and my coral's RTN, is it due to the parasites? Yes, it's not your temperature change. If my alkalinity changes five points, is it due to the alkalinity change? No, it's due to the parasites. So, where are the limits? We're all gonna have to find out together. I don't have all the answers. All I know is that for years and years, for the last 30 years, 50 years, we've been telling ourselves that RTN is due to some chemical in the water. We don't know what it is. Let's send it out for testing. Let's send it out for ICP testing. Nonsense. Nothing, none of those chemistry variables or parameters are the reason your corals are RTNing. They are RTNing from an infection. And the infection is this here parasite, folks. And by the way, what do you think about that swarm right there? That's coral tissue, by the way, right there. You wanna to talk to me about that swarm? Huh? You think this is a alkalinity problem? No way. This is a parasite infection problem, folks. And that is a swarm. And people wanna know, oh, do these corals, I mean, do these parasites swarm? Yes, they do. That's a swarm right there. So, 
I'm Dr. Arjun Majin. I've tolerated a lot of bashing by people who have no clue what's going on. But I'm telling you right now, all the RTN that occurs in your tanks, all the RTN occurring in the reefs around the world is due to this parasite, Philaster lucinda and Philaster guamens. They have cousins such as Cryptocarion, Euploides, Dystera, and a couple of others. And those guys, their cousins, cause STN, slow tissue necrosis, bleaching, discoloration. These guys, they cause RTN. And every single coral in your entire system that RTNs, if you take it out, put it in a cup, and wait overnight, and put this water under the microscope, this is what you're going to see every single time. You're gonna find these guys swimming around. That's because they are the ones causing the RTN, nothing else. So questions about whether changes in alkalinity, phosphates, temperature, salinity, potassium, iodine, pH, whether those changes cause RTN, they do not. This causes RTN right here, it's an infection.